Okay, shalom, shalom to everyone out there. Shalom. Shalom. Yasha Allah, Mishpatah, Mishpatah, Shalom. For those who may be unaware, Shalom means peace or peace unto you. And Yasha Allah and Mishpatah or Mishpatah means Israel or Israelite family or people. All right, so to start things off, let's give all honor, thanks, praise, and glory to our Heavenly Father, which is the supreme creator of all things and his only begotten Son, which is Christ, and who this world foolishly and ignorantly calls Jesus. Secondly, much love and support to all of the brothers and sisters out there, no matter if you're part of a camp or not, no matter if you're new to this faith or not, as long as you continue to push this biblical truth with all faith and sincerity to all of our people out there, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent. Once again, it's your brother, Ahawad Ayashara, from the sea souls of Israel, the rocks of offense, and also the ambassadors for righteousness. Once again, dropping you another quick video impromptu. So, brothers and sisters, what this video is going to be about is the keeping of the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is known in the ancient Hebraic tongue as Yom HaKaparem. And the Feast of Tabernacles is Sakat or Sukkot, which is in Yiddish, which is known as the Dwelling in Booths. Salakia. For us, brothers and sisters, who's well seasoned in this faith, we're already are well aware of these two very important customs that we should be keeping as a nation of people if you consider yourself a descendant of the 12 tribes of Israel which is once again a descendant of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans and Seminole Indians of Negro descent all right so for those who are unaware I got a couple of scriptures that I want to bring out concerning this topic you know and the first one that I want to go to is in the book of Numbers chapter 29 okay so I'm going to set my camera up here so I can be able to read this to you guys, all right? All right, it's a little cloudy and drizzly where I'm at right now. So, you know, hopefully that you can hear me well. All right, so... For those who in the faith, you know, as I was saying before, we are well aware that the Day of Atonement begins at tonight, which is the Bible described as even, which is short for evening, which is sunset, which is on the 10th day of the 7th month, according to the ancient Hebraic calendar. And then five days after that, which is on the 15th day, will be the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. All right. So the first one that I want to go to is in the book of Numbers, chapter 29. Bear with me one minute here, brothers and sisters. Okay, so here we go in the book of Numbers, once again, chapter 29, starting at verse 1, and it reads as follows. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, which is now, right, this is the seventh month, right? Which is the first day, which is considered the new moon, which is the dark moon, right? Verse 1 from the top again. And in the seventh day, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Okay, so when it says no servile work, that means no work for hire. All right, you're not supposed to be going to your job, your place of employment, working for money, right? It is a day of blowing the trumpets onto you, okay? So that's basically the blowing of the trumpets, all right? So that's on the first day of the seventh month, okay? So when you blow the trumpets, you're blowing your ram horn when you're making your prayers and your supplications up to the Most High, right? So that's on the very first day of the seventh month. So how do we determine that? We can go back to the book of Exodus, chapter 13. All right. 
So in the book of Exodus, chapter 13, starting at verse 3, and it reads as follows. And Moses said unto the people, who's the people that's being spoken of here, that's the children of Israel, which is the so-called descendants of the 12 tribes, all right, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent. Verse 3 from the top again. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, so that's letting you know that Egypt is synonymous with bondage, which is chattel slavery, which our ancestors went through in Egypt, right? For by strength of the hand of the Most High brought you out from this place. What is this place? That's Egypt, once again. There shall no leavened bread be eaten, all right? So the leavened bread is the bread that's cooked with leaven or yeast that makes the bread rise, all right? Or in other words, that can be doctrine, the leavened bread. The bread is the scriptures, right? So if you want to speak of it in a spiritual sense, the leavened bread can be the false doctrine from the other nations. But in here, this is speaking of literal bread, all right? That's made with yeast or leaven, okay? Verse 4, this day came ye out in the month of Abib, or Abib, all right? The month of Abib is the very first month of the year, which falls between the time of March and April, which is around like the first day of spring, all right? So when you count from there, if you want to count from March, okay, April, that would be your first month, Okay? And then you will go to May and June. That would be your second and third. July would be your fourth. August would be your fifth. All right. And September would be your sixth. That's if you're counting from April. But if you're counting from March, your seventh month would be September. Okay. So if you're starting from March, it's going to be April the second month, May the third month, June the fourth month, July the fifth month, August the sixth month. And September is the seventh month. All right. So according to the ancient Hebraic time, our months all they, they always fell in between the Gregorian calendar months. All right. So in this sense, we're counting from March. And then when you count from March into September, that would make seven months. Right. So being that the first day of spring falls between the months of March and April, which is a bib, that would be our very first day. And then when we go to September, which is the seventh, I'll get the day of the blowing of the trumpets and the day of atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, right? So verse four again from the top. This day ye came ye out in the month of Abib, verse five, Salakia. And it shall be when the Most High shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivitites and the Jebusites which he swear unto thy fathers, okay, which is your ancestors, right? To give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, which is a land that's very prosperous in natural resources, right? That thou shalt keep this service in this month, okay? So that would be the first day of the year that the Most High is talking about, right? So we're going to jump down to verse 8, and it reads as follows. And thou shalt shoot thy son in that day, okay, which is the first day of the year, right? Saying, this is done because of that which the Most High, the Supreme Creator, right, did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt, which is bondage, right? Verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and for a memorial between thine eyes which is your mind, your brain, right? That the most high law may be in thy mouth. Okay, so this is talking about the law, statutes, and commandments, all right? So this is referring to the dad giving the firstborn son and also the children after the firstborn son to keep the laws of the most high. As it says here, and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Most High, the Supreme Creator, law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Most High brought thee out of bondage, which is Egypt written here, right? Verse 10. 
Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance and his season from year to year, meaning every year you got to keep this ordinance if you're a descendant of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. So your new year begins in the time between March and April instead of in the death of winter. All right. Which is January the 1st in which the world celebrates. Right. So we're going to go back to the book of Numbers, chapter 29. And we're going to go down to verse 6, and it reads, Beside the burnt offering of the month, and his meat offering, which is the bread, right? So the burnt offering that's speaking of here, that could be speaking about the actual meat, which is literal meat that you're about to, to eat, which is the flesh of animals, or it could be talking about your incense, all right? So... According to the biblical scripture, the burnt offerings can also be referred to as your sweet saviors up to the most high, your, your, your sweet incense, your sweet fragrances, all right, which is your supplication for your prayers. So verse six from the top again, besides the burnt offering of the month and his meat offering, and the daily burnt offerings and his meat offering. So that's letting you know. At the beginning of every month, which is the new moon, which is the dark moon, you're supposed to be given a supplication up to the Most High. And then your daily burnt offerings and your meat offerings, which is the bread and uh, daily incense, you know, at sunrise and sunset. And their drink offerings according to their manner for a sweet savior. OK, as I was saying before, that's what's known as the incense. That's the sweet savior, right? A sacrifice made by fire onto the Most High, all right? So as I was saying, you know, the, the burnt offering can be your literal meat offering or it can be your incense, all right? Both are made by fire onto the Most High, meaning you have to roast your animal flesh to eat it. Or if you want to light your incense, you're going to have to light it by fire, right? So it can be either or. Verse 7, and ye shall have on the 10th day of this month which is tonight right a holy convocation and ye shall afflict your souls meaning you got to afflict your souls from all of the fleshly desires all of the wants that you crave on a daily basis right no matter what it is it could be a certain food or it could be tv cable tv it could be your phones all right it can be whatever whatever you feel that you need to repent from on a daily basis, this is what you have to afflict your soul from, right? Verse 7, again from the top. And ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month and holy convocation, and ye shall afflict your souls, ye shall do any work therein, all right? So as you noticed before, as it says in verse 1, ye shall do no servile work, all right? That means work for hire or anything that's not associated with the work of the Most High. But right here in verse 7, it's different. It says, ye shall do or not do salakia, any work, okay? Any work therein, meaning you're not supposed to be doing any kind of work, all right? Not even the work of the Most High. Now, if it's an emergency, you got to do what you got to do. The Most High understand that. But this right here says you shouldn't do any work, all right? So you shouldn't even be making videos, all right? You shouldn't even be doing the work of the Most High. If you're of this faith, man, because the most high command is you're supposed to be afflicting your soul and giving your prayers and supplications up to the most high. This is a special day for you, a holy confrontation, right? So let's go to the book of Ezra, chapter three. Okay, so we're in the book of Ezra, chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. 
and it reads as follows. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem, meaning they all came together in one consent, right? With one mind, okay? Verse 2, Then stood up Jeshua, or Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheotho, and his brethren, and build the altar of the Most High God of Israel, which is the supreme creator of all things, right? To offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law, okay, which is the law, statutes, the commandment to the Most High, right? Of Moses, the man of the Most High. So that's letting you know that Moses was a chosen man of the Most High. That's who he gave the law, statutes, the commandments to, to give to us, all right? Verse 3. And they set the altar upon his basis, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. Okay, so that's letting you know that you're supposed to be fearing the Most High, man. You know, if you feel conquered or oppressed by the other nations, man, you can't really go at this by yourself trying to defeat the other nations, man. You got to pray and supplicate up to the Most High, and he's going to fight your battles for you, man. All right? Verse 3 again. And they set the altar up his basis for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the most high, the supreme creator, even burnt offerings morning and evening. OK, so as I was saying before, your burnt offerings can also be referred to as your sweet savior incense to the most high. And this is what you're supposed to be doing every morning and every evening. When you're making your prayers and supplications to him, right? Verse 4. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, all right, which is coming in five days from now, right? As it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the custom as the duty of every day required, all right? Verse 5. And after it offered the continued burnt offering, both of the new moons, and of all the set feast of the Most High that was consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Most High. Okay, so as I was saying here, every new moon you're supposed to be making your offering up to the Most High, you know, with your your sweet Savior incense and your 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 meat offering and your burnt flesh offering, which is your lamb or your bullock. All right. So let's read that again, verse 5. And after it offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Most High that was consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering up to the Most High, verse 6, from the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Most High. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord had laid. All right, so that's letting you know again from the first day of the seventh month, they begin to offer the burnt offerings. All right, so that would be your lamb, that would be your incense. And the very first day, of course, we already know as the, the blowing of the trumpets. So you're going to be blowing your ram horn or your shofar to the most high while you're making your prayers and supplications up to them. Right, so let's jump back to the book of Exodus, chapter 30. To give you a little idea of what I'm speaking about here with the burnt offerings, right? What you're supposed to be doing every sunrise and every sunset. Okay, in this sense, which is referred to your sweet smelling incense, all right? Okay, bear with me one minute here, brothers and sisters. Okay, so here we go. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 30, starting at verse 1. And it reads as follows. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shittim wood. Shalt thou make it. All right. So that's what's talking about, the altar, when you burn your incense onto. 
And then let's jump down to verse 6. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. All right. So this is how the Most High commune with his people. He commune with his people through the incense, right? The supplications of the incense and through the clouds, through the signs of the heavens, right? So when it says here, the veil, okay, the veil is the covering. That's what block you from the visual of the Ark of the Covenant and the incense that you're going to have set before you, right? As it says here, and thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the Ark of the Testimony before the mercy seat. The mercy seat is where you're going to be sitting. This is where you're going to be asking for mercy from the Most High, right? When you're making your prayers and supplications that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. Verse seven. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. Okay, so the lamps that's being spoken of here is the menorah. All right. Verse eight. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even. All right. So as it says here in verse seven, he lighted the incense every morning and then right here in verse 8 it says and when Aaron light up the lamps at even he shall burn incense upon it a perpetual incense before the most high throughout your generations all right so if you a descendant of the 12 tribes of Israel which is the so-called Negroes Hispanics Native Americans and Seminole Indians of Negro descent this right here is a law and a covenant this is what we make with the Most High, man. This is what we're supposed to be doing as a nation of people. This is a perpetual, perpetual salaki, a law, okay? So if you want to look at the definition of perpetual, as a matter of fact, let me get that for you right quick. Okay, here we go. As it says here, right? Perpetual, never ending or changing. All right. And then it says here, as your similitudes. All right, let's see if we can bring this down here. Hopefully that you can see it. Everlasting, never ending, eternal, permanent. All right. Endless, without end. Lasting, long-lasting, consistent, abiding, enduring, pernicious, all right? So this is what perpetual mean, right? As it says here in the scriptures, you know, Esau have had a perpetual hatred for Jacob. You know, the descendants of Esau, this is what they have even to this very day, man. They have a perpetual hatred towards Jacob, right? So this is what perpetual mean also in the book of Exodus chapter 30. This is a custom and a law that our people should be doing to the Most High Man, making those prayers and supplications up to him through the incense, the sweet-smelling incense, all right? Not no strange smoke, as it also says in the book of um, Exodus, all right? And some of your strange smoke would be your, your cigarette smoke, your marijuana smoke, all right? Things that defile the body, all right? So you're not supposed to be burning that strange smoke up to the Most High Man. So as it says here again, unfailing, unchanging, never changing, changeless, unvarying, unfading. All right. So this is what this is. This is what perpetual means, man. If you want to go to the second definition of it. Slakia. Occurring repeatedly. So frequent. All right. Now my phone want to act up. Well, you get the idea of what I'm talking about, right? All right, let's read that again. Shalakia. Occurring repeatedly so frequent as to seem endless and uninterrupted. All right. So that's what perpetual means, man. So when the scripture says Esau have a perpetual hatred for Jacob and his descendants, this is what perpetual is, man. All right. So this nation 
is always going to hate you, man, no matter what. And you can't change that. All right. This is how the Most High made a man. As the Most High says in the scriptures, you know, who can make straight that I made cricket. So this is the way that the Most High have created these people, man. So they're always going to have that perpetual hatred for you, no matter what. Even if it seems mild to severe, they're always going to have that perpetual hatred of you, man. They're never going to want you to be above them. All right. And then when you start to be above them, that's when it's going to begin to show. Okay, so that's your definition of perpetual, right? And as a matter of fact, let's get an example of that. You know, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, Salakia. Let me set this phone up here. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. Right? Bear with me one minute here, brothers and sisters. So we're in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, and we're going to start from verse 1. And it reads as follows. Moreover, the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it. Okay, so who is Mount Seir being spoken about here? That's another name for the place where Esau dwelt. Okay. Verse 3, and say unto it, thus saith the Most High, which is the supreme creator of all things, right? Behold, O Mount Seir, all right, I am against thee. So just to let you know, Mount Seir was in the land of Edom, okay, which is Petra, Idumia, all right? That's the land of Esau. O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will scratch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee the most desolate, okay? Desolate means destroyed. All right. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the supreme creator. All right. Verse five, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of who Israel. All right. So this is what this is talking about, man. So that's the reason why the scriptures use certain words when they're trying to describe certain things. Because some words have a broad band meaning of, of certain things, right? So with these other translations of these scriptures, they try to take words like this out and use other words that doesn't cover a broad band of meanings, right? So as it says here again in verse 5, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel, by the force of the sword, okay, which is the weapon of destruction, okay, back then that could have been considered a literal sword, but today the modern day sword is the gun, all right, or anything that can destroy you, you know, it could be the so-called jab, you know, you know, which is considered a bioweapon, all right, so a lot of people can interpret it, the sword as many things that destroys people, right? By the force of the sword, okay, so what does that sound like? By the force of the sword, you know, relate that to what's going on now, right? Everybody have to be forced to get something, okay? If they want to continue to live in this society, if they want to continue to have so-called fun, right? If you want to go to your restaurants, if you want to go to your movie theaters, if you want to go to your amusement parks, all right? If you want to go to your car shows, okay? People are being forced by the sword, to take this, you know what, right? To live in this society. By the force of the sword, which is the weapon of destruction, right? In the time of their calamity, all right? In the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay, iniquity is sin. What is sin? The transgression of the Most High's laws, according to the biblical scripture, right? Let me set this phone back up here. Just to give you a little glimpse of what I was reading. All right, so the, this, this scripture is, these, this Bible is true, man. This is what this is speaking of here, right? Verse 7, Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High God, the Supreme Creator of all things, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Okay, so all the atrocities 
that Esau and the descendants of Esau is doing to the nation of Israel, which is to the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent. The Mosai is basically going to do the same thing to them and worse, all right? Let's read verse 6 again. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High God, the power to Elohim, all right? I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sit thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. All right, so what does Esau and the descendants do? They love blood, man. Even when they're eating their so-called burnt offerings, sacrificing to their God, which is not the God of the Bible, by the way. You know, they love their meat, medium rare or medium raw, all right, with the blood still dripping out of it, all right? So this is what they do, man. They love blood, okay? Even in their so-called secret societies and secret organizations, they have their satanic rituals that they do, okay? They have to drink that, you know what, man, right? So it's really no secret, you know, a lot of people know that it's going down, right? But you also have a lot of people out here that don't know. That's why a lot of people are falling for the traps, man, especially our people, unfortunately, right? So let's read that again. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High God, power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, sit thou hast hated blood, not hated blood, Salakia, even blood shall pursue thee, verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Seir, okay, which is the place where Esau dwell, once again, right? Or this could be speaking about the people, how the way you want to perceive it, right? Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, most meaning most destroyed, and cut off him, that passeth out and him that returneth. Okay, so the Most High is saying him that passeth out and him that returneth, meaning the ones that goes out of the world and the ones that come back into the world by birth. Okay, so the ones that die off, they make their transition into the, the spiritual realm and the ones that's being newly born into the world. This is what the Most High says about you again, man. Verse 7 from the top. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. Verse 8, and I will fill his mountain, okay, the mountains is the land, all right? And the reason why it's called mountains, because, like, say, if you're in a submarine, right, and you're going to a, count, a continent, and if you're looking at that continent from the bottom of the sea, if the water wasn't there, these continents would literally look like mountains, because in order for you to get to the top of the land, which is above water, you're going to have to go up beside that continent, right? So if you're in the trenches between the continents and you're looking at America, right, from the ocean, from the ocean floor, it's literally going to look like a mountain, right? So that's the reason why the scripture says the mountains, all right? It's not really talking about like the mountains that's above land, all right, that we know as the mountains today, right? Just to give you a little brief understanding about it, right? So verse 8 again from the top. And I will fill his mountains with his slain, all right? Meaning all of his countries, everywhere where Esau dwell, everywhere where Esau conquered and took in over the earth, right? It could be the UK. It could be Australia. It could be South Africa, okay? It could be Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, all right? United States, of course, Canada, okay? Parts of Mexico, all right? parts of uh, South America, anywhere where Esau dwells, right? Saudi Arabia, Yemen, okay? A lot of people think that those are the original Ishmaelites over there. Those aren't the original Ishmaelites, man. The so-called Afghanistanians, okay? Those are descendants from Esau, man. That's, just, that's the reason why they're so gung-ho on bringing the so-called refugees, the Afghanistanian refugees over here because Esau knows his people. He knows that they're really descendants of Esau, okay? Most likely through rape, all right? So, in continuation, you know, I digress. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword, okay? The most high sword, by the way. Verse 9. I will make the perpetual desolations, perpetual, okay, so you already know what the definition of uh, perpetual is, right? So the Most High is saying he's going to destroy Esau and the descendants of Esau forever, right? Perpetual 
desolations, and thy cities shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the supreme creator. Verse 10. And what's the reason why? Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, okay? So what's talking about the two countries here? That's talking about the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel, okay? Which is the 12 tribes, all right? So this is what Esau and the descendants of Esau said. He said, Israel is going to be mine. The people is going to be mine. I'm going to conquer them. I'm going to enslave them. I'm going to oppress them, okay? Verse 10 again from the top. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, meaning we will control it. Whereas the Most High was there. All right? So that's letting you know that the Most High was with us. He was with Israel, man, not any other nations, right? Verse 11. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High, power the Elohim, I will even do according to thine anger. All right? And according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred, okay, against them. Who's the them that's being spoken about here? That's the 12 tribes of Israel and the descendants. And I will make myself known among them, who's the people, the 12 tribes, when I have judged thee, which is you, which is Esau, okay? So the Most High is saying here, I will make myself known that I was always with the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the descendants, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent, Salakia, all right? So the Most High is going to let Esau and all of the other nations know that he was always with us from the beginning. No matter how you view us, no matter how what you think of us, no matter how lowly you think we are, the Most High is still with us, man, especially if we are willing to turn back to him and repent. Right. Verse 12. And thou shalt know that I am the most high and that I have heard all of thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of who Israel. OK. All of the blasphemies that they speak against us on a daily basis, calling us stupid, calling us ugly, calling us a monkey, oppressing the hell out of us. All right. We're the last hire and the first fired. A lot of us don't even have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of, right? You know, and the ones that do have things within our nation of people, they're the sellouts. The ones, they're the ones that bow down to their God, okay? They're doing their, their, their satanic rituals and their secret societies and organizations and their fraternities and sororities, worshiping their God, Lucifer. And if they're not worshiping Lucifer, they're in Islam.